Hi, grace and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Ralph Hill from Mount Horeb Lutheran Church, and it's good to be with you today as we dwell on the Word. Today is November 26. It's Thursday, so happy Thanksgiving to each and every one of you. Today we're going to look at the passage from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 15. So let us read these words. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you've made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. So as you dwell on this passage today, what jumps out at you? Uh, what questions might this passage that Paul writes in his second letter to the Corinthians uh, what questions might raise, and is there a nudge that you feel in your spirit, in your heart, about what God might be calling you to do on this particular day? Um, as I dwelled on this, the, the verse that jumped out at me was verse 13. Um, there are several in here that were good uh, that I appreciate, but I, I, this one jumped out for some reason. You glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing. So our confession, our, our acceptance, our admittance, our proclamation of God's good news of coming into the world through his son, Jesus Christ, to teach us so that we might become followers and live as people of faith and the gift of the spirit, which provides the fruit of the spirit, which is generosity, one of them, so that we become generous in the sharing of the things that we have. You know, each, uh, and that maybe that's a special passage for this time of year because um, it's Thanksgiving. Each year at Thanksgiving, I recall the genesis uh, or the beginning of the first one, just to remind me of what took place. I read the story years ago, but I, I remind myself of it um, time after time, year after year. So I read that on the Mayflower, um, when people were coming to this new world, this new place, the Mayflower had 102 passengers and it was crowded. Um, the rocking of the ship made some of the passengers seasick. Others were sick because there were just not enough fresh fruits and vegetables to eat. And all of them were just tired. All of them were cold. All of them were hungry. It was a tough voyage across the Atlantic. And most of the passengers were called pilgrims. They had left England for a special reason. In England, they had not been allowed to have their own church. And now they were going to settle in America where they would be able to go to their own church, to pray their own way, and live life anew in this new world. But for eight weeks they sailed, and they dreamed of this new land. And then one day they hear the joyful cry, Land ho! Land ho! And the day was bitter cold. But the hearts of the pilgrims after such an arduous trip were warm with happiness. They kneel on the wooden decks of the Mayflower, they bow their heads, and they give thanks to God for bringing them safely to this new land. Um, however, there were bad times ahead in that year of 1620. And that first winter at Plymouth, Massachusetts, was, uh, it was full of sadness. Many of the settlers became sick, many of them died. And with heavy hearts, the small group of brave pilgrims worked harder than ever, they cut down trees for houses. They had to start from scratch. They made warm clothes uh, to wear in the cold weather. And by this time, they had some good friends. They had, they'd made friends with some of the Native Americans that were nearby, especially the chief, Massasoit, and his tribe. And the long, hard winter finally passed into spring. 
And then the Native Americans shared with the pilgrims how to plant corn. And they placed a small fish in the corn seed to make the soil richer. I can still remember learning this in, in elementary school. Um, but that spring, the men, women, children worked hard in the fields. And, and that year, the corn, thanks to their friends, grew high and it grew well. And there was plenty of barley and wheat and peas. And the governor of Plymouth, William Bradford, called the pilgrims together and he makes a brief speech and he says, you know what, we've got... That was a tough start, but that we've got so much now to be thankful for. Let's, let's set aside a special day to thank God for this good harvest this year. And so the day was set, and, and the Native Americans were invited. And so from the forest, deer and turkey were hunted. From the streams, from the sea, fish and eels and clams and whatever were caught. Uh, pies were cooked and bread was made. Um, and the special day arrives. The Native Americans, one of the stories says, came with a present of five deer, and there was so much company, so many people, so much food. And Chief Massasoit and the 90 Indians sat down to the first Thanksgiving dinner in America. The pilgrims said prayers of thanksgiving. They thanked God for a good harvest. They thanked God for their now comfortable homes and warm clothes. They thanked God for their new friends who taught them the ways of a new land and how to share so that others could prosper. And they thank God for the new country they now called home. And so today, as we gather around tables or around Zoom maybe to check in with your family if you can't be with them, make, take time to remember not only this story, but to remember your story. Because knowing that your story is part of God's story helps you realize the significance of your life and your story and what you have. The gift of community and the gift of generosity and the gift of sharing are all key to thanksgiving. So may we continue to be those kinds of people that live in community, that are people that reflect generosity in our living and share with one another the good things that help life make better. So there's a hymn that we sing sometimes. It's uh, ELW 693, Come, You Faithful People, Come. And um, I just thought I would sing a stanza of it just as a reminder of this one, um, of this passage, but also of Thanksgiving. So let's see how it goes. Come, you thankful people, come. Raise the song of harvest home. All be safely gathered in. Ere the winter storms begin, God our Maker doth provide for our wants to be supplied. Come to God's own temple, come, raise the song of harvest home. Well, as you gather anyway to, to remind yourself um, of the many ways, reasons we have to be thankful, may you be blessed on this special day. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of community, for the gift of this earth and the things that it provides so that we might live and have an abundant life. And we thank you for those who have gone before us, who have struggled to blaze a path. Help us to be grateful and help us to be generous in our living as we give thanks this day. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, grace and peace and have a great day.